For Fountain Day 125, Foundry. As I sit here on this overcast morning, waiting to hear from God, I close my eyes and ask, what do you want to say? The question is normal for me to ask, but the responses are never the same. He always has something different to say. It's become a truly wonderful experience to lean in, listen, and hear words that are I either don't know or are simply not normal words from my vocabulary. Every time I hear a new one, I immediately go to my phone, type it in to receive a definition. This morning's word is foundry. Foundry is a workshop or factory for casting metal. An unusual word for me to think about. I can say with certainty that God released it to me. But upon reading the definition, I know he's doing two things. Speaking to me personally and giving me a devotional topic to share. We are in the foundry right now. Our family is, but also America. At the same time, we're all being forged in the fires of discomfort, uncertainty, and wonder over our future. We wonder what America will look like in a year. We wonder how we've declined so quickly, unless it's intentional. And if it's intentional, then how do we separate from those treasonous individuals who are bent upon destroying our country from within? How can we stand? Who will stand? Will the church ever notice they're under attack? The games of distraction, disinformation, and disconnection are strong. Look this way, we're told. Believe this, not your eyes, we're lied to. This could never happen here. We are deceived into inaction with this thought. Whether we realize it or not, we are in the foundry being forged by the fire. But overall, this is a really good thing. Forging removes, Im removes impurities and imperfections. It's necessary to reveal what needs to be removed from metal so it's as strong as it needs to be. We're being perfected in the fire. Yes, I know perfection can't fully be attained, but we can most definitely keep taking one step at a time toward it, and we should. We should always be moving toward Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. God has been removing chafe for, for, chafe for some time now. It takes time to remove what's been deeply ingrained. He is steadily renewing our minds, taking us out of our slumber, awakening our hearts to truth, giving us courage to stand against those who are under demonic clouds of deception and leading masses astray. We're not alone. We have a great cloud of witnesses standing with us. When we stand for truth, we lean into the unseen. As the world demands, we believe what we should not see. Spiritual eyes are opening to see the demonic for what it is. The time is now. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of, think of the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet been given your lives, and you have not yet given your lives in the struggle against sin. Hebrews 12, 1 through 4.